spondylolysis, spondylodithesis, spondylitis, spondyloses, confusing names. You got to know the difference between them, even if you cannot pronounce them. Lysis, spondylolysis. Lysis means dissolve. It's an anatomic defect. It is a pars defect. Lysis occurs commonly in the fifth lumbar vertebra in about 5% of the population, and the hyperextension makes it worse. If you get oblique x-rays, you will see the Scotty dog sign. The SPIC scan is used to diagnose it if the X-ray is negative. Second one, the spondylolithesis. Thesis, giving a thesis is a big deal, means it is slipped. It is a slippage of the vertebral body, not a slippage of the disc. One vertebral body is slipped forward over the other. It usually occurs at L5, S1 in the pediatric population and L4, L5 in female in adult. In adult, the slippage rarely exceeds 30% and it usually affects L5 nerve root. 15% of patients with pars defect will progress to forward slippage. If there is a large slip, it will continue to slip. If you have a dysplastic slip, it will continue to progress. In children, L5-S1 slip will usually affect L5 nerve root. How about spondylitis? It is inflammation of the vertebrae, like enclosing spondylitis or TB. In enclosing spondylitis, it goes from stage of inflammation to stage of fusion. You get bamboo spine. Watch for the marginal syndesmal fights. There is a high risk of C-spine injury. Fracture may be occult. You may need CT scan or MRI to diagnose it. You may have neurological deficit. You may have epidural hematoma. In this case, you need to do a laminectomy and posterior spine fusion. How about spondylosis? Spondylosis is vertebral arthritis, degenerative arthritis of the joints between the vertebra. It narrows the neural framing. It pinches the nerve. It causes radiculopathy. In the cervical spine, Compression of the spinal cord from arthritis can occur, and that will lead to myelopathy. Myelopathy means gait disturbance, broad-based shuffling gait, upper extremity weakness, and clumsiness. Myelopathic hand with interosseal wasting and upper motor neuron signs like the Hoffman and Pepineski. You need to get an MRI of the C spine. And this is how the questions in the exam comes. Patient with gait disturbance, difficulty in walking, have hyperreflexia. MRI will show severe lumbar stenosis. What is the next step? Obviously, if you examine that patient, you'll have positive Hoffman sign, positive Bepineski. See, he got cervical spine myelopathy. You need to get an MRI, but if you can't get the MRI, you will get CT scan with myelogram of the cervical spine. Coexisting 
cervical myelopathy can occur in lumbar stenosis. When they tell you the plantar extensor response is positive, it means extensor response of the toes to plantar stimulation. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.